Hi, I'm Jenny Roundtree from Bob Jones High School in Madison, Alabama, and I'm going to talk about a specific classroom activity that I use when I am talking about binary uh, number conversions, converting from binary to decimal and from decimal to binary, and also about how to use the ASCII chart. First of all, before I talk about it, I think you could use this lesson, this classroom activity, in a variety of different parts of your course. You could use it in other courses too. I use it sometimes in my other programming classes. Um, you could, I use it when I'm talking about the internet. Uh, you could also include it if you talk about in courses about computer hardware and software, when you talk about the concept of abstraction, uh, when you discuss algorithms, and even when you're doing programming. Um, a couple of my students, in fact, decided that they wanted to do their create performance task uh, doing conversions from different number systems, so from decimal to binary to hexadecimal to octal. So basically what I have them do, is pretty simple, is I divide my class up into groups of two or three, and I give them pieces of paper. Uh, each group gets a set of pieces of paper where they have words on them, but they're in binary and the words form, when they're put together, they form a quote. It could be something like, I think, therefore I am. It could be funny quotes, movie quotes, like, show me the money, things like that. Uh, and then what they have to do with their group, if they're in binary, they have to convert them from binary to decimal, and then they have to use an ASCII chart to convert them to the appropriate characters and sometimes punctuation marks. And since I got them all shuffled up, once they have figured out what all the words are, they have to put them in order, figure out what the quotation is, and bring it back up to me. So before I even do that, usually the day before, I spend some time going over with them the, uh, the whole concept of other number bases, uh, how to convert from decimal to binary, from binary to decimal, how to use an ASCII chart to figure out what those characters are. Uh, what those numeric values represent. Uh, we do some individual and group practice. Um, preparation for this, a lot of this you're going to find there is a link in the MOOC uh, with all these resources, um, but you need to have some ASCII charts. You don't necessarily need a whole classroom set, maybe one per group. Um, and you want to make sure that your charts don't already have the binary uh, values on them. And then I go ahead and you can take the resources from that website, print it out, and you can go ahead and cut them up and put them together into the um, mix the pieces of paper up to give to each team. Um, there's an example of one. So each one of these would be on a separate piece of paper that you'd shuffle and give to a team of students. Um, this is kind of a recap of what I said earlier. Divide the class into teams of two or three students in each group. Typically, I'll put mine in pairs, but uh, sometimes I don't do that. If I have an odd number of students in the class, I'll have three on a team. If I have unusually long quotes, quotations, I will put three people to that, uh, to that quote. Or in the case, my first semester, I had a lot of freshmen, and they had a lot of a lot of them were just starting Algebra 1A, and they struggled with their math skills, and so I would put them maybe three to a group. And then I would allow them about 10, 15, maybe even 20 minutes to work on the quotes. I also, because some of them would, might get a few words the quote figured out, say, oh, I know the rest of that. So they would not actually go through and finish computing by hand what the values were. So I make them also bring me their work. They have to show me their work when they turn it in to get credit. Um, as I said, I've done this twice in my class, in my CS Principles class. I've even used it in my introductory programming class and seen some positive things come from it. A lot of student collaboration, peer teaching. Uh, it's easy to find mistakes when they make those. So for instance, if you're familiar with what the ASCII chart looks like, um, it only goes up through a certain decimal value. So if they computed that a binary number was actually 583, they could see on there that doesn't exist. So they know they made a mistake. Or if they, if they came up with the value 30, if you look at the chart, it's, it's not a character. So they would know they'd made mistakes. 
it's also fun. I try to pick quotes that are funny or are real meaningful, um, a lot of movie quotes, and so they have fun with it. In fact, later they'll say, I remember when we did this activity with the quotes. So it, it really is fun for them. Um, you could actually do this also, and I've done this in my programming class, you could extend that to talk about other number systems, number bases. Uh, for example, I give an example with hexadecimal, which is base 16. So you have to use 0 through 9, but then you run out of digits, so I explain to them you have to start using the letters A through F to represent numbers 10 through 15. So I give an example of how to convert um, to hexadecimal, and I, I do it this way, showing them remainders, because I can use that when we actually write programs and do algorithms. And then I show them taking the same number and I convert it back the other way, explaining once again that it's the same as in binary, that you're converting, that each digit is a power of 16. So you could even do that with the quotation activities as well. Um, so that, that's a very, it has been good for me in my class. So if you do have questions on there, there's my contact information, my email, and that's about it. Thank you.